but by anyone's judgment, they would have to be considered clever. The suppression case of E.V. Gray. As far back as 1958, Edwin V. Gray discovered that the discharge of a high voltage capacitor could be shocked into releasing a huge radiant electrostatic burst. This energy spike was produced by his circuitry and captured in a special device Mr. Gray called his conversion element switching tube. The non-shocking cold form of energy that came out of this conversion tube powered all of his demonstrations, appliances and motors as well as recharged his batteries. Mr. Gray referred to this process as splitting the positive. During the 1970s, based on this discovery, Mr. Gray developed an 80 horsepower electric automobile engine that kept its batteries charged continuously. Hundreds of people witnessed dozens of demonstrations that Mr. Gray gave in his laboratory. In 1973, Ed Gray burst onto the scene in Southern California with a radically advanced electric motor technology. His EMA motor could produce 80 horsepower from a set of four deep cycle batteries that the system recharged at the same time. The claims were outrageous but were supported by much of the testing data. One set of early tests were sponsored by the Crosby Research Institute and conducted by Pan World Enterprises Limited. On the strength of these test results, Bing Crosby became one of Ed Gray's largest investors. Besides the motor technology, Gray also routinely demonstrated a solid state power supply that produced up to four times more power than was usually available from its internal battery pack. He configured this invention into a self-contained camper light that could run light bulbs with a cold electricity for an entire weekend on a single charge. The energy coming from the system was so safe that children were allowed to play with it in a bowl of water. Ed Gray died in April 1993 in a trailer in Riverside, California where he lived with his girlfriend Dorothy. At about 2 a.m. Ed was home alone when something happened and he was later found dead. There is suspicion of foul play involved. The motors were then scattered across the country after Ed Gray's untimely death. To this day, they have never been reproduced. One, these pieces of plastic being launched by electromagnetic charges are just the start of something big, according to 60-year-old Edwin Gray. The self-described inventor says these launches prove his theory. You can use non-metals, in this case plastic, for electromagnetic cores. This process is the reverse of what the scientific world was ever uh, taught in school. Gray says different methods of wiring and unconventional use of amperage and voltage are the keys to his technology. He won't reveal the specifics, for he feels he possesses the solution to the obstacles facing U.S. aerospace and military research programs. The barriers of physics seemingly limit our ability to reach speeds necessary to explore the universe, when journeys to planets in our own solar system are projected to take years. Gray says his electromagnetic propulsion is the first step towards achieving the speed of light. Research into similar propulsion methods is underway on other fronts at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for one. The any core, but he questioned if the benefits could be as great as those promised by Gray. Gray says the technology employing metallic cores uses too much energy. Uh, the efficiency to lift X amount of weight is probably one thirtieth of what it would normally be as the scientific world would know it. But at the same time, they couldn't do the things that we're doing anyway. This is an impossibility. This was man's dream only to be able to do the things that we're doing today. He says his system can move objects one-third faster than current speeds experiments have reached. Gray perfected his theory here in his Council Idaho lab. He feels his technology also has military applications, using electrical energy to fire bullets or missiles.
destruct themselves. Gray started developing this idea eight years ago. For the past year and a half, he's been trying to get someone in the U.S. government interested. So far, he's had little luck. Gray says he's been getting the same reaction he got 30 years ago when he first proposed his theory. Get this guy out of here, he is crazy. But Gray says it's paranoia. The scientific community isn't willing to accept teachings opposite all previous learning. And the military aerospace industry is afraid to admit decades and billions of dollars worth of research have been wasted. You say you were Hughes. You just got a contract to build uh, uh, atomic motors for the, for the next 10 years for $10 billion. Uh, you know they're obsolete before you start on it after knowing that this technology is here. So you're going to do everything within your power to cause this not to happen. And listen, we hear this all. He claims other countries have expressed interest. In Council, Jeff Beeman, Idaho at 5. Report. A comprehensive look at local, state, and national news. Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, January 31st. I'm Teresa Davis. Here's what's making news this morning. Two days after the space shuttle Challenger exploded over the Atlantic, a large piece of debris was pulled from the ocean yesterday. Coast Guard officials off Florida believe the debris is part of the shuttle's fuselage. Another large piece may be submerged in the same area. NASA is continuing to look for clues into what caused the disaster. Also found Thursday was a bone fragment with a piece of blue material attached to it that was along the shore. We have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and lift off. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Until this week, the Space Shuttle program had only minor problems. Basically, it was a successful and popular venture in space. That has now changed. Challenger. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles. Downrange. The solution to Tuesday's tragedy may lie inside this nondescript building in Grand Prairie. It's a concept called plastic high-frequency magnetics. at the laboratories of Universal Innovative Technologies Incorporated, scientists are working on a new type of propulsion. It involves, they say, catching the pulsating high amp spikes of electromagnetic fields and converting them to lifting energy. If Buck Rogers ever had anything going, he wish he had this system. Edwin Gray claims this invention. He says use of the concept would have avoided Tuesday's disaster. There's no way in the world of a vehicle uh, blowing up from combustible materials because there are no combustible materials. And the vehicle itself will be able to travel uh, once launched from the pad on its own. to company officials, they say a car could run 500 miles on four batteries, which take only seven and one half minutes to recharge. Universal Innovative Technology says it got the $750 million for research from a foreign firm, ZTEX Limited, on the Grand Cayman Islands. Joe Gordon is president of Universal. I want to point out to you that it has been known for many, many, many years that if we could ever learn how to control a high voltage magnetics, this was the answer to all space travel. Uh, this is just the first time that anyone's ever been able to develop a method to actually control high voltage uh, magnetics. Now he must convince NASA.
this video presentation by ZTEX Limited is intended to introduce a technology that causes more efficient use of electrical energy and a breakthrough in magnetic levitation. The technology's applications are considered numerous, but will be demonstrated in this presentation in the form of electromagnetic devices of a rotational and linear configuration. No similar state-of-the-art electromagnetic devices are known to exist. the world. The concept upon which the technology is based is described in the patent as electrical energy that is controlled by circuitry for use in the propulsion of inductive devices, whereby discharged electricity is effectively captured and stored for future use. applications that can employ this technology in the movement of inductive devices is limited only by the designer's imagination. Acid batteries will be used to energize an electric motor generator that will in turn energize numerous electric light bulbs. The current draw from the 105 amp hour rated batteries will be 200 amperes for a sustained period of time. Test data, which is available upon request, shows that the batteries alone will produce a 200 amp discharge rate for a period of slightly in excess of four minutes. Whereas with the concept hardware, the period of time that the batteries will maintain a 200 amp discharge rate.